Don't forget to follow us on social media for beautiful food and inspiration.
right, everybody. Welcome to episode 200 of Local yeah. Love. I'm fucking, yeah. pre- I'm fucking stoked for this. I didn't even know this was going to be episode 200 until I put up episode 199 last <laughs> Wednesday. Um, but we'll get right to it here. I'm producer Dave. You can find me damn near anywhere, especially Grinder. I got my every week in studio co-host. Hey, what's up? I'm Chip Deville. You can mostly find me on Instagram and uh, trolling your auntie on Facebook. And I'm Juan Maserati, your favorite neighborhood Mexican keyboard player for Rebels Camp and those in providers. Then we got and we delivery got, groceries to your mom. We we got a whole ass band. We got uh, at the top is uh, somebody shaking their shoulders. Introduce yourself, ma'am. <laughs> Kia ora. <laughs> I'm Michelle Perry from Ashes Fallen. Your your accent it melts us. We got a couple. We got a couple Kiwis and Aussies in the chat too. We got the the man, the myth, the legend. The guy who we're going to be nice to and not play food metal this night. Uh, <laughs> James <laughs> Perry. What's up? What's up, James? Thank Introduce you so yourself much. real quick. Yes, I am James Perry. Um, I'm with Ashes Fallen. Of course, I also a long time ago did a project called Food Metal, and I've also been a solo artist. But we've been doing Ashes Fallen for three years now, and we are so honored to be part of your 200th show. That's amazing. Woo! Thank you so much. Yes. It just so happened to be that way, but I think it's perfect because y'all are great guests. Yeah. And Somebody not as familiar to us around here, but last time also a great guest on the very bottom of the screen, sir. Uh, hey, I'm Jason, uh, also in Nash's Fall. <laughs> so, of course, Jason and I go way back in the San Jose music scene. We were in Spit Kiss together. We were in James of the Fall, Control Theory. So we're all, you know, got some deep roots in San Jose, just like you guys. That's awesome. Veteranos. I'm going to definitely uh, have to ask some history questions later. <laughs> It'll be like a history test. Yeah. So we just played one of your songs and I know this, you, we just got it and I, mm-hmm. I, I knew you were coming on when you, when you sent it to me. So I was like, okay, I'll put that on the server. I'll put it on our list, but I'm going to listen to it for the first time when I have these, these cats on the show. All right on. Yeah. I know like I could have listened to it a bunch more and given it some more, you know, airplay on the show, but I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna do this the first time. Um, <clears throat> I know that song is about something, but maybe it would be best if uh, members of the band told us what it was about instead of me poorly doing so. <laughs> sure. Well, um, a little bit of background. That, that That's actually a remix of a song that's on our last album that, just, that came out last year, A Fleeting Melody Out of a Fading Dream. Um, ultimately, I was inspired, th- you know, just... With the whole album, I was thinking about so much of what's been going on in the world. And that song is really kind of a shout out to the protesters and the people who are just out there on the streets, just trying in the face of everything to make things better and make things right. Now, um, we had done a remix exchange with some friends of ours, a band called The Axiom Divide. And they're actually going to be putting out a remix we did of theirs very soon. But they, they remixed Stand Your Ground. Their, their singer, Jay Ty, just loves the song and said, I want to remix that one. So we're like, OK, cool. And they sent it in to us. And we'd been sitting on it for a little while because we wanted to sort of put together a like remix EP between albums. But then this war started, this terrible thing that's happening in the Ukraine. And we just wanted to do something. And I thought, you know what? Let's put this out as a charity single right now. I mean. The song is perfect because you know, we're just watching the people of Ukraine just stand up for their homeland and stand up for their right to you know self determination and everything. And you know we're mortified by what's happening and we wanted to help. And so we've we've put the song on Bandcamp. We're donating 100% of all sales to Direct Relief's mission in Ukraine. And last Bandcamp Friday we even matched it ourselves. So dude, you know. that's awesome, man. So I saw that n- that number was pretty pretty like you know it's not gonna. In the grand scheme of things, it's not that it's not that not that big. But if a you know a few thousand other bands put that m- amount of money together, it really really might t- t- you know help out a community or whatever. If you don't mm-hmm. mind asking, how much did you if, how much did you guys raise? I think so far we've contributed. Oh, I don't know. Steven over eight hundred dollars now. Yeah, it was that's good. Yeah, oh, okay. it's, it's been our best-selling single on Bandcamp, which I'm not sad about at all. And I mean, it it makes me so happy that our fans want to help us support, and, and it makes me feel good that our music's you know, I mean, music is good by itself, but the fact that we're doing something positive with it yeah, and something that really goes, actually, on- you know, make a make something with it beyond just making the music. It's f- fucking huge. Right. And, you know, I think it goes along with the message of the song. And we're just we're basically just trying to put our literally put our money where our mouth is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was actually pretty stoked to find because uh, I've been like tagging you guys on Instagram and stuff like that. You can find a lot of your music now when you look for when you try to add music to a post, 
Uh, mm-hmm. You can you can find a lot of Ashes Fallen music, which I thought was pretty good, cool. Good. But yeah, yeah, that's awesome. It was a uh, pretty cool to see. I always like when I get to see local acts and they're kind of you know getting their stuff out there. It's really awesome. Yeah, we've been working hard to get our stuff out there, no doubt about it. And we so appreciate your support. From I mean, you guys have had us doing do a live stream or two, and this is at least the third time we've been on your show. So yeah, we totally appreciate that you guys have been behind us all the way you know it's it's just not often that we have guests on who what's the thing i'm looking for have their fucking shit together <laughs> <laughs> yeah reals that's true that's true actually i see you are just about put up we belong nowhere do you notice some of the scenes from there because i shot a lot of that in san jose um i've i you know i've heard the song a bunch of times but i don't ever think i sat down and like really watched the video because i like knew the song and so I'm like mm. probably less inclined to like sit down and watch the video. Yeah. Um, oh. But I pulled it up. Most one of the reasons is because I don't think I've ever sat down and watched the video. And I, I wanted to, you know, before we get going with this video, I wanted to just congratulate you for teaching yourself how to use a video editor in like, like with no time to prepare yeah. and putting out like pretty high quality <laughs> shit for the band. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. That first <laughs> video though. Effing amazing. I really like the oh, vampire, vampire one too. Uh, yes. Uh, needs must. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that you went from zero to completed video in like nine days or something. So, yes. Michelle, you work so hard. You are so capable. We are so, I mean, I'm lucky to have you as my wife, obviously, but also <laughs> extremely lucky to have you as my bandmate because you, you make us all so much better. Well, and I think like all three of you, as far as the project, are lucky to have each other. Oh, uh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. You know, Jason, I know that you're a little little less uh, outgoing than the other two, but it's obvious <laughs> it's it's obvious that you care a great deal about this project, primarily because you've you've come on this shitty podcast twice now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason's loud when he has to be. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Jason speaks with his guitar. Yes. I like that. That's that's fantastic. So the band is, if I'm not mistaken, it's two guitars a keyboard and essentially a, a computer is that right i mean you know yeah, some... I'm the computer. <laughs> <laughs> well you know yeah I mean, jason and i both play guitar i i michelle and i both sing michelle plays keyboard and some percussion and then on the backing tracks there's usually some bass guitar um got my v drums over there so some of the drums are actually played uh, we're doing a little bit more with saxophone. We've got a a cover nice. that's coming out on on a um, tribute compilation to Love and Rockets and Tone on Tones on Tail that's coming out in a few months. And I busted out the sax on that. And there's also saxophone on our song Requiem, which is the the closing song on our last album. Sweet. But yeah, generally we're, we're you know live we're a three piece. A, a lot of it is backing tracks to be honest, but you know it works. I'd love it if we had a bass player, but it's so hard just to get three people together and you know for get real. things done. It's it's you know th- there's something to be said for for keeping the the footprint of the band small and then you know we're getting ready to do some shows some out-of-town shows and with gas prices the way they are if we had like six people and all these vehicles that would really make things a lot more difficult so yeah. right and like um, like not for nothing but like you know you have to the, a band has to be at a certain level to really make any money going out and gigging you're going out and gigging because you love it like i absolutely i, I absolutely. hope you guys have you guys have, by the way or y'all have like shot up like the the it's amazing to see every time I see you posting, you're like this goth industrial show spun our track or this DJ played a remix of our track. Like somebody's like in the mix playing your stuff and just mm-hmm. watching. I think this ashes fallen project is exactly where you were going to end up. Just cool. <laughs> and it, it's, it's, it's super good. It's super good to see it. Cause um, you know, we've uh, strangely enough, our best Twitch friends are goth DJs. Uh, yeah. you, you probably know DJ star. Oh, of course I've known star for like at least 20 years, like every, every goth and, and gay boy who knows the goths know each other eventually. <laughs> right. But like, right. I've been able to, you know, cause I'll talk about myself because it's my show. I've been able to get involved in some charity events with them where, um, mm. they've helped people yeah. like this gal, uh, hate more had her, st- her studio or right. shop broken yeah, I into. That. I remember that. Yeah, it was and, terrible. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of all these events, there's all this goth music and then I get to like play break beats and everybody gets to get a little mm-hmm. bit low or some disco and it's just like a different thing. And it's just mm-hmm. neat that that community 
mostly because of star being interested in our cult show on Thursday night is like brought me in uh, as a DJ okay. and I've been able to play for, you know, a bigger crowd than I usually would here on Twitch. Cause the people here on Twitch, like there's not a lot of people here right now for local love. I'm glad you're all here though. And this, this show, we're probably never going to quit this show, even if there's like eight people listening, <laughs> but you know, I'll have like 80, a hundred people watching at the end of a stream or whatever. And then I'll start DJing and an hour later there's nine. But if I get that mm-hmm. raid from the, these benefit events, you know, right, somebody right. will kick in like 80 or a hundred people back in who are interested in music and then my community and their community mix. And then it's just, it's just been fantastic. That, that goth scene is, you know, <clears throat> I latched onto it when I was a young gay man because the goth people didn't give a fuck that anybody was gay, <laughs> but I don't know how many goth nights I've been to at, at gay clubs. It's, the, the two communities have always kind of been hand in hand. And, and I mean, it's so important that the goth community remain inclusive and, and it's true. A lot of goth DJs and bands that we know have done an awful lot of charity events. Our, our friend, uh, Jasmine, DJ chat noir, she's, she's done a ton of them and we oh, always I know try to support I know chat, that. Yeah. I, I think, she raided into me on one of the events. Oh, is awesome. That, is Chat Noir she? Is that right? She, she heard? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jasmine. She's a great friend of ours. Yeah, a yeah. Great supporter. I, like, I've, it's, it's just been super fun and like, honestly, completely unexpected. And I think the, one of the, um, <clears throat> one of the, this pandemic has been really hard, but like the flip side of it is like watching community happen and w- even mm-hmm. watching communities start to intermingle in new and interesting ways. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had this kind of experience as, you know, a talker mm-hmm. who also happens to do some art and then got involved with an art community because mm-hmm. they were, everybody's fucking stuck at home, you know? Right. Right. Well, the, we always say the pandemic really helped us as a band because it mm-hmm. got us, it got us out there. We started live streaming and then everyone's like, Oh wow. You know, these guys are doing it. So let's include them and all of a sudden we were live streaming just continuously weren't we right well you remember two years ago when they turned they they had to make sofa street fair into an online event and i think we were part of the local love stage if i remember you correctly guys fucking, at the, afterward i don't know if you showed up to the zoom call afterward but everybody was talking about your set mm-hmm. people were just blown away and i remember it was funny because you were like kind of yelling at me on discord are we ready to go are we ready to go are we ready to go i'm like (laughs) i'm like other people would be annoyed by this but i love this i absolutely love this he thrives under the chaos no i just Mm -hmm. love that you were that you it it wasn't you weren't mean it was clear that you cared about like Mm. the transition hitting the quality of what you're putting out everything like went right and i i like really appreciated that and since then like i legitimately know that if we do anything with ashes fallen that we don't have to worry about ashes fallen and mm-hmm. that's 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 fantastic so mm-hmm. i'm gonna go with we belong nowhere this is the music video right. for it this is done by michelle perry is this your second music video that you did is this correct yes it may as well be your 200th i can't believe how good, <laughs> how good you got it video editing in such a short time and uh, everybody <laughs> will be you. right back
fucking amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Dude, that's that's a pretty uh that's a pretty powerful video. I really like I was just telling uh these guys, I really like that uh I don't know, a lot of what you're seeing kind of tells the story, goes along really well, like, gives you a chance almost more to focus on what's being said. Um, but yeah, that that was good, man. That hit. It's like, gothic. A, a lot of, like, sad irony in there. It's gothic it's, and dystopian. And it's, I was it's speaking pretty truth. pretty thinking that mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I took all the footage myself, and when I was putting it together, I was just like, oh, my gosh, you know, like, this is really... This is really hard to make, but I yeah. really have to make it. So, mm -hmm. and, and it was the, yeah, it was the contrast between all the buildings going up and the you know the wrecking balls and the people in the doorways that everybody walks past every day, and it's like, yeah. And then you and, got and, that and one the homeless, the homeless encampment in front of the thing that says "We Are America." I was like, yeah, that one hit. That one hit really hard. It. Um, yeah, that was one of those. That was one of those unhappy accidents, I like to say. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually, we actually had to play the footage backward to look like that. And it actually says, "We are America's farm to fork capital," because that's Sacramento's little slogan. But yeah, just looking, we're like, "Oh wow, that is such the money shot." Yeah, no, that was uh, that really drove the point home. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was really good. Um, Thanks. So, so you had mentioned like over the pandemic that it kind of gave you guys a chance to really almost step your game up uh and and, and a lot yeah. of bands that we've interviewed have kind of said the same thing uh you know what would you say like would you would you say like what would you say were like the the positives to come out of that what would you say like you benefited from from uh well i mean getting I, that I think time get, yeah i mean i would say again the, the first thing was just the fact that we managed to figure out how to perform as a live streaming band very well very quickly yeah and so you know we we had some gear and we had the smarts to you know be able to put on a pretty good looking show and you know we, we managed to pull it off and get on some some bills that we probably wouldn't have been able to get on otherwise and i think between that and just again like dave was saying there's been there's so much happening on twitch these days oh, and absolutely. I, I, I've done a ton of networking with with a lot of DJs and other bands, and I think that's really helped us as well. And then, of course, during that time, we 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 focused and got our second album out, which I mean, to me, it's leaps and bounds better than our first one. And yeah, well, I think we we just really grew as a band, and we grew our network, and now we're, I'd say, we're doing a lot better than we were in 2019. So with uh with your recording process, like what's your what's your typical like recording process? Like, do you guys kind of just all do it together and, you know, hit record or, or is like what, like kind of walk us through your whole, how you guys like recorded this last album? Sure. Um, I mean, it's, we, we definitely don't all sit in a room and jam together. That's, that's not really how it works. Um, <laughs> Some of the songs were, were written by me. There, there were, a, you know, there were definitely some songs where Jason brought some some riffs to me, and and we came up with some things together. Michelle had some really good lyrical ideas, particularly the song "Vampire of the Ballad of Myla." That was very much her brainchild, and she didn't write the music, but she said, "Okay, I want it to have this kind of feel." And then one day I was just jamming on it, da 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 da, and then she said, "Oh, there it is." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all, all three of us had jammed out a few things for a while, and it, it just really seemed like the song, it was a bit of a struggle to get together, but then we, we finally did. But, you know, the actual recording process, it's definitely one of us at a time. Um, you know, we, we did most of the recording here in my studio, but, you know, since you're able to do so much with laptops these days, we actually did some of Jason's parts over at his house, which was very convenient, and that, and that worked out just fine. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. How about you, Jason? Like, did you... Uh... Did you find any uh, like advantages from, I guess, getting the time to focus more on music? Uh, well, no, not really, because working at home kind of turns your whole life into being in the office. So uh, uh, right. there's, there's a lot of that. It kind of gets in the way. Yeah. I, I can yeah. imagine. But the other thing that happened during the pandemic is that Everyone in the band moved. Um, everyone in the band bought new homes. <laughs> Jason and his wife have a new new house, and then of course Michelle and I bought the chapel, as, which you can see in Michelle's background, the glorious chapel. Which you know, 
it, it's, it's been a great space for recording as well as where Michelle is, is the act, the chapel itself, which is where we rehearse and do our live streams. She's so framed up very nicely, thing. I must say. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. I would say like uh, to, um, to like the concept of this album, is mm -hmm. it, does it follow the same line of that video that you just released, like uh, where there's a lot of speaking truth or a lot of hard truths and mm -hmm. just uh, whatever the, like what would that, was there a concept attached to the album? That, that, or does it cover like a whole lot of different topics? Or a bunch well, of different I mean... Things? It, it didn't it didn't necessarily start out that way i would say but well the first al every album i'm i and i'm the main lyricist so i'll i'll sort of speak to what a lot of it's about um i mean the, the first album was a lot about where i was at that point in my life you, you know the dissolution of my previous marriage the fact that i sort of collapsed and fell down and then came back up again and michelle and i got together and that's a lot of what the first album was about. I mean, that's not what I'm. That, that's not where my head's at now. So a lot of the album did end up just being about things like like what's happening in the world and you know what's happening with me and you know losing my losing my mother and the pandemic and all the injustice. So, injustice. Um, yeah, right. That that if there is a theme, it's that one. And one of the things that Michelle is really good at is when we've got all the pieces together. She, it's generally her job to come up with the the sequence, you know, the actual sequencing of the tracks. And I, I mean, even though it's 2022 and a lot of people just listen to single songs, we, we've all been doing this a long time. We like albums. Yeah, we grew up and on so albums. We, yeah. So yes. we really almost, we really sort of put it into a side A and a side B. And side A was really more focused on sort of like the, the bigger picture injustices. Side B is a little more personal, particularly towards the end where the last two songs are more about losing my mom. But yeah. So that, <clears throat> that, that chapel seems to also loom large in this album. It's almost mm. to me, this album, like if I had to be like, what is this album about? I'd be like, it's about that place. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like what I get from it, but it might be because okay. I'm friends with you. You, we don't, we haven't mm -hmm. spent a lot of time together, but we're, I, you know, if we were all having dinner, we'd be having a great time. And mm -hmm. I'd, 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 I'd even sit, I'd sit next to Jason and jab at him and talk a little shit because <laughs> I don't know Jason that well. But, uh, but to me, it just felt like it was about the place. And I don't mm -hmm. know how much of it was started before you moved to the chapel, but I feel like, even though there's not a lot of imagery of the chapel, I don't think in the videos, it just seems to mm -hmm. th that place seems to loom large, at least in my consciousness with the album. And it may just be that I know you and I've watched you, you two turn that building into not just your home, but like more, more like an expression thing. of your yourselves as artists. And so I don't. And that's I, very much what it is, and, yeah. and you know, I don't know if you feel that way about the album, but uh, that's I certainly feel like that's. I would I would be like if you if you would have released the album and called it the Chapel, I would have been like, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> interesting. Well, I mean, it's like this place found us because we had already done Thy Will Be Done from mm -hmm. the album that that was yeah. already written way before we ever discovered this place or decided yeah. to move yeah. so, that will be done and we belong nowhere we had both already been written and released as singles before we moved here um and some of the songs existed in in premature form but basically it was i guess um Christmas break 2020 was where I, I decided, you know what, instead of taking a week off work to go on vacation, I'm going to work in here. And so I took all of the ideas that all three of us had, and I just I basically worked eight to five every day here in the studio and, and pieced most of the album together. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you get, um, I used to call it monitor head, where oh, <laughs> you've yeah. been staring at the screen for too long, and it like just it like sucks the creativity out of you at some point, like no matter. Well, it's, it's also ear fatigue and, and that's really important with mixing. You know, you, you can't be list, blasting your ears for too long. You just completely lose perspective. You need to, you need to turn get it out of the room, have a bit of quiet. Well, I mean, it really helps to mix at volume. It helps you notice some of the fine details, but huh. you got to take breaks. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if that's, that's just such Im important advice to anybody who's doing any recording or mixing, you, you need to get some, some perspective right. from right. it. If you're just banging out ideas, it's fine to do a 16 hour session, just banging out ideas. But when you, when you go to like figure out how it's going to sound, like I used to poorly produce dance music and that's why I'm a talk show host now. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. But, uh, but yeah, if you're sitting there, like I always knew that like I could do, you know, me and my friends could sit around and smoke weed all day, but then I knew that if I was going to mix something down or whatever, they had to leave and mm. I had to like do like f- three to four hours at a time max and then like go out mm-hmm. and live my oh, yeah. life for a day even because it's, mm-hmm. it's, <clears throat> you know, it's difficult. And the other thing is you can totally, trick yourself totally. if you've been in the headphones for 12 hours, oh, you can trick, oh, you yeah. can trick yourself. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's why Facts. he's got an extra set of ears here. <laughs> right. I come, yes. I come in afterwards and I, I hear things differently because well, you he's got, been you got another extra set of ears too. I'm, you know, I'm sure Jason is being bounced out. Oh yeah, definitely. It's like, I am not loud enough. <laughs> but yeah yeah we definitely send mixes to jason but i mean that's one of the great things that michelle pro- provides me as an artist anyway even before we decided to be a band together she it's so great to have her perspective an outside perspective listening to things differently and i mean i've said i've said this time and again jason and i have been doing this a long ass time michelle has been a musician for a relatively short time and i think that the perspective that she brings as a relatively new mu- musician is so important and r- really, you know, cause Jason and I could just get our heads so far up our guitar playing asses. And it's, <laughs> it's not what it's about. I mean, if there would have been no Michelle, the first album would have been called heads up our guitar playing asses. <laughs> <laughs> so just real quick. Uh, what's up? Peter yeah. Coclature. Peter Coclature was been a guest on this show before. We'll probably try to have him in the studio. Peter Coclater is a, and I will say this without laughing, a pianist and uh, pretty mm-hmm. talented. And in fact, if you were listening since b- the beginning, uh, before Down Ballot started, one of his songs played on the auto DJ before the show started, but after I started the stream. So just wanted to say hi. And I gave you a VIP in the chat because you're a VIP, mostly because you're 40 and you look 27. <laughs> Fuck you, bastard. <laughs> uh, I don't like you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and demand that we play that Vampira music video. You guys yes. want to give us a little bit of an intro, though? Like, tell us the story behind it before you press play? We could do a, we could do a, like a 12-episode podcast series about what happened to this lady. Now, let, let me tell you guys, something like that may well happen. Um, Michelle has taken a... He- I mean, she already was massively interested in my, in Myla Nurmi, Vampira, and hey, she's... If you, if you want to do that, to I do am... more and more research. If so. you want to do that, I am down to do anything from just give you advice on the differences in the types of recording and the problems I've had to all out producing the series. So if you, if you decide to do that, let me know. Excellent. I, I want... It sounds fascinating, and I want to help in whatever way is appropriate. You, you have no idea what an amazing life this woman led. Far beyond just being Vampira, she was, you know, Michelle, maybe you should take over since you're the real expert here. <laughs> the only thing I say when it's talking about Vampira is you all know who Elvira is, right? And yep. everyone's like, yeah. And I go, well, what if I talk to that Vampira came before her and Elvira is actually, I won't say a ripoff because she was hired to be the new Vampira. Until my learning said, oh, no, I do not think so. So changed name and carried on, and that's who Elvira is. She's pretty much a vampire reinvented. I like she was the original, the original late-night horror host. From 1954. Mm-hmm. My Nermi mm-hmm. vampire. I follow her daughter or her granddaughter or some <clears throat> shit on Twitter because you told me about them. Sandra? I think so, yeah. Yeah, her niece. Sandra, it's her, yeah, it's one. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I was wrong. It was, but a member of her family who's involved in her legacy. I follow them on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know she was on Twitter. No, but I'm meeting her next week. Oh no, yeah. we're getting together. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, we're 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 doing a whole lot of projects together. She's giving me a whole lot of um, vampire memorabilia, and I'm gonna actually be auctioning it off on behalf of the family. So that's so cool. Woo! So yeah. we, if you, if you're thinking about doing a podcast series with her, just sit down, set your phone down, hit record, and talk talk for twenty minutes about vampire. You'll be glad you yeah, did. Yeah, we've, we've set aside a um, whole day to spend with her before our show in Seattle. So we're actually leaving here. We're going to Salem, Oregon, where she lives. And, um, yeah, we're, we're spending a whole day and a whole evening. We're taking her out for dinner and stuff. But, but we talk all the time. Like, we're, you know, well, we're, we're besties. That's so cool. <laughs> That's another way yeah, like that, that's another lady. way that like I was talking about, like, art and music and all this stuff, like, brings people together. You would have never met her otherwise. 
That's right. That's right. If it wasn't for the song, I would not have met her. But in saying wow. that, she's 75 years old. And, you know, when these people pass, all the stuff is gone. So now's the time to actually, you know. Yeah, if it's okay it with her, make sure you set a and... make sure you set a phone on a table with a voice recorder going and, and like like interview her like you're the press and shit. I think bring you two phones oh, yeah. and record them yeah, on both. Absolutely. We'll edit absolutely. it for you later. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh just to recap real quick, because uh Michelle, your your connection's kind of bad, your audio's cutting in and out. You look fabulous though. Which is really weird. Usually the, 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 the usually the video will shit the bed before the audio, but whatever. Like you're in a chapel, anything could happen. It's haunted and shit. So, yeah, Vampira came before Elvira. Vampira didn't really, or Elvira didn't really steal her shtick, but kept it going. But you know, Vampira got the raw end of the deal. Is what happened. Yeah, like she, like sort of. I think it was like a public access show or a very small late night show with like horror movies and like a gothic theme, and. Then somebody, I guess, bought the rights to it and wanted to replace her, and then they replaced her with Elvira, and she got the raw end of the deal, and Elvira is, like, super rich. Yep. Myra actually tried to ask uh, her $10 million, but unfortunately, uh, Myra was a pauper. She had nothing. She had zero. When they found her, um, passed away in her apartment, she was in nothing but a T-shirt, on a sofa, with her feet up on a patio chair, and that is all she had. Damn. But she lost. She lost the case anyway. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, very sad. It's, it's people who create something, you know, and somebody else just takes over. Someone's got more money. Somebody's got more backing. They run with it. They become rich, and the creator gets nothing. I mean, it happens right. all the time. It happens in art. It happens in business. It has happened to so many inventors. Yep. Again, injustice. Everyone yep. that started their show that's better at it than me and making more money than me, they obviously stole my <laughs> shtick too. Absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to run this Vampira, the Ballad of My Mila video. I just want everybody to understand that when our, when our girl, Michelle, in the very top in the center there, started to make this video, I'm not going to say she had never touched a video editor, but she had never really used one. Yeah, we'd done a handful of videos. When we when we bought the chapel, we 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 briefly tried our hand at being vloggers, but that that we quickly realized, oh my goodness, this is so much work, and it's just getting in the way of doing all the things we want to do. But but yeah, we Michelle turned this thing around in so little time, and it and you know as, the proof is in the pudding. Let's as check a person, it out. As a person who hates just the process of hacking off the beginning of the and the end of the video, these videos, and then rendering them <laughs> to put them out like on um, oh not YouTube anymore, um, like Odyssey and Rumble and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, I can't believe that you did this from not knowing how to edit video at all in nine days because I fucking hate video editing. <laughs> I'm, I'm just one of these logical people. I'm like, well, if this does this, then this does that, right? Now I want to move this, so what do I need to do that? Oh, here it is. No, I just did it. And then everyone's like, you were doing stuff that should have been in uh, post after, edit. In After Effects, after, yeah. After Effects, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, now time to learn After Effects in an afternoon. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, this is Vampire, the Ballad of Mila by Ashes Fallen. This is Goddamn unbelievable.
If you're just joining us, we're here with all the members of Ashes Fallen on Local Love, the 200th episode on EchoplexMedia.com and Twitch if you actually have the stomach to watch us. Um, we just watched an am- <laughs> He's like, actually, I'm drinking because I got to look at all you. <laughs> I'm drinking, so I look phenomenal. Um, <laughs> but that that music video is fucking great, first of all. Uh, I really like that. That had to have been a lot of fun. Uh, just to kind of get to go through all that old footage and then kind of layer it with your own footage. I mean, that was that was really cool. That I, I really enjoy watching that video. Um, Jason, what a uh, which okay? So like, there's a lot. Of, this is a guitar heavy song. Who who's who in that in that song? Like, where where can we find you in that song? Are you the are you the uh, down down down, down 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 down? Yeah, that it's, it, it gets pretty buried for the most part. James gets to, right, but to it's the, it, it leads that. into the song though. <laughs> It's the it's the it's the backbone of the song Jason does. It's the clean part. It's, yeah. it's the signature riff. Far, far too humble, man. Far too humble. That's right. That's the song. Do, do point out that guitar in the background, Jason. You and your lovely wife oh. Melanie made that guitar yes. in the background. Back it's got Vampire on it. Oh, can we see it? Yeah, hold it up to the camera. Yeah, um, we, we did it. In a, that's guitar. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, last, they made it. Do you, yeah, last October, do you have like a few different guitars that you tend to use? Like, or like, do you have like, is that like your main baby? Uh, no, actually, we only use this for that song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we we played an event called the Vampire Ball that's held every year in Sacramento, and and Jason took it upon himself to build a guitar just for that song, and it, you know, it oh, sounded great. Awesome. It, it works great. It looks really good. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's really cool. So like uh with you said you got some shows coming up and you're gonna be like actually like traveling. What what cities right. are you looking forward to playing? Like what where are you where are you gonna be heading? Uh well we're we're looking forward to all of them. We're I mean, Michelle and I have been saying we're just looking forward to doing a bit of traveling again. We yeah. have not left California in so long. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. What so, we got here is we got I got the flyer up. Check this out. I can oh, do great. this like I'm reading yeah. copy. We got March 19th, San Francisco, California. Nice. That's going to be yep, at the knockout. Right. We got March 24th, Seattle, Washington. That's going to be at substation. Mm-hmm. We got March 26th, Portland, Oregon. <clears throat> I don't know what that says. OTFS. So it's, it's, it's the Out from the Shadows Festival. It's kind oh. of a long story. There was going to be a pretty big festival that we were supposed to play in Portland. It it kind of fell apart, but then some of the bands, including us, were like, no, we're going to keep the date, and they, they turned it into a mini-fest. Fantastic. And so, and that's going to be at the Coffin Club, formerly known as the Lovecraft Bar. Really cool venue. We're totally... And Jason and I have played Portland before. That's that's a really fun city. And But Ashes Fallen has never been to Seattle or Portland as a band. So, oh. you yeah, know, we're definitely looking forward to those. So real quick, me and the media wench went to Portland. Do you know why we went to Portland? I do not know why you went to Portland. <laughs> <love the> story. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you why we went to Portland. And then we're going to go back to like reading this, this flyer, like it's copy. Cool. Uh, we went okay. there to attend a chemtrails convention. <laughs> oh, <God>. oh <laughs> all right. So we got a uh, April 4th, Sacramento cafe continental. We got April 22nd, Fresno, California. Careful there. Don't do any math. Any of you, we got La M- Mason, La Masia, Mason, La Mason. Sure. We got Cathedral mm-hmm. City, California, April 23rd. That's Laguna mm-hmm. Negra at Bart Lounge. We got April 29th, San Jose, California at hey. the van. Hey. Caravan. Right. Right. And then closing it out back in, in your hometown or close enough to it. It's yeah, Sacramento, May California. That's, the start. That's, opening up for, that's opening up for actors. So we're pretty excited about that one. Not like. Wait, okay, wait, Not like what? people from Central Casting, but a band called Actors, right? A band called Actors. <laughs> oh, okay, um, okay, I thought it was like, we're going to play, and then these guys are going to do a, like, a little performance, they're going to do a scene. We're actually opening for comedy sports. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's no, that's cool. No. no. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, and, you know, we're playing with some other, you know, some a, f- a few names in our scene. They're at the um, the Portland event, we're not, it's, it's a two-night event. It's the 25th and the 26th. The 25th, the headlining band is called Vision Video. Video. Some of you might have heard of Goth Dad. He's all over TikTok. That's the no, guy but he's, out, he's on TikTok. Goth Dad. I'm going oh, yeah. to follow. Goth Dad. Yeah, Let's yeah. Everybody go follow Goth Dad. Let's follow Goth yeah, Dad. Dad. Goth Dad. <laughs> follow Goth Dad. Dude, I love Twitch. TikTok. One of the main. Whoa, whoa, stop. <gasps> he broke a cardinal rule. Stop. <laughs> TikTok just always makes noise. That's true. It does. I hate it. Wait, why are you? But I'm addicted. Why are you? No, no, there we go. I've right. never been on TikTok in my life. <laughs> it's oh, really? amazing. You should do. <laughs> you should do like a dance 
fuck fuck this my phone's just gonna make hell annoying fuck tiktok i'll follow what is it goth dad or goth grandpa who's that again i'm not sure of the name but it's goth dad i'm not sure exactly what the handle is on tiktok but it's definitely a thing if you were in my discord i'd tell you to just put it in uh the peanut gallery in the discord but i guess Mm -hmm. i can do that what's what's the name again goth grandpa goth dad (laughs) just one word i'm not sure have a good day at school (laughs) i'll find it it's, yeah. I left mm-hmm. I left myself a note in my own fucking main chat room. I always look at that. I'm like, oh, I said something that must have been important. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jason, what's one of your favorite songs off the new album? Uh, I think I really, really enjoy Forever, actually. Um, it's just a really interesting, it has really interesting guitar lines. Um, it's a lot of fun to play. You know, it's oh, fucked up. That's I don't think not I one have of the ones it. I sent you. <laughs> Sorry about that. My fault. <laughs> what was it? Oh, I, I, it looks like they don't have that one. I, I guess I didn't send it to them, so it's not in oh. their database, so they can't play it, unfortunately. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh! Foiled again. Foiled again. <laughs> well, of what we do have, <laughs> what would be a demand? If you, if you had to force one of your songs upon us, right now us and all of our listeners over in australia because nobody locally apparently listens <laughs> then uh w- what song would you force upon our listening audience right now uh that will be done heck yeah we got that one <laughs> all right this is that will be done by ashes fallen and uh everybody check out the uh slideshow uh during the break it's all the all the local shows that people took the time to give me their flyers for and i think people should make their flyers in 16 by 9 so they look good on people's displays and on my overlay but people don't always do what i want this is that will be done by ashes falling <laughs> no, they don't. back <laughs> A 
Fuck yeah, that was Ashes Fallen, Thy Will Be Done, that, by Demand from Jason. That was awesome. Yes. Yes! Thank you for demanding that. Indirectly. Thank you for playing it. Yeah. God damn! And thank you again for having us on your 200th episode. 200. Oh God, Holy shit, I can't even count that high. It, it wasn't even a complete <laughs> shit. <laughs> fingers. It hasn't even been a complete shit show. It's been fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's oddly mm-hmm. organized. Although, Juan, I am a little disappointed in you. I believe you you've posted on social media something about pizza. The guy damn skipped, right, we're have some pizza. I skipped Yo. dinner. I've I've started drinking and there's no pizza in my stomach, so <laughs> oh, no. red light is gonna be very interesting. Um <laughs> so so um we're gonna go ahead and uh, open the panel to uh, everyone in a few minutes here. Um everyone like all local heads, like if Aaron wants to jump in, I'm sure the media winch is out there wants to jump in. Um, I don't know who else is out there. Peter Coakleitcher may have a proper mic and a connection, but, uh, y'all are welcome to stay. I just want to like, I just want to like, just once again, reiterate that when I was like, oh, we're going to have ashes fall. And that means I don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to fucking think about what questions I'm going to ask them. I don't have to help them with the setup. I don't got to do nothing. So I want to thank you for being uh professionals, but I also want to say that that the way that I feel about it probably extends to the whole project. And it's probably why you you're, you're seeing a, a, a big uptick in uptake of your music by different people. And so uh, you, I want, I want just keep that shit up. Fucking keep, stay on the ball, be just like me where everything has to be exactly right. And one of these days I'll be like, I knew them when they were, <laughs> I knew them when they were just streaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a few when, com- I, when it was James Perry. James, James Perry. Perry. Well, you know, we were just talking about the fact that um did- there was a there, there was a Sofa Street Fair a few years ago where I did <laughs> I performed as a solo act and, <laughs> and you guys were there. It was, and yeah. it was just me and a guitar. And Jason was there. It was the first time we'd seen each other in years and oh, wow. Michelle was watching from New Zealand on camera. So in a sense, you were kind of you kind of helped bring us all together, I suppose. <laughs> I just love that, like my drunken wow. British accent, like like has like kind of carried on to like your following. So I still see that James Perry. Perry imposter that walks around our neighborhood. By oh, yeah. the way, there's there's a guy that lives in this neighborhood. Well, you know, at least wanders around this neighborhood. He could be like your your like stunt double if your stunt double did okay. nothing. Okay. Um, <laughs> like. Uh, he does not fool me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, you know, just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> so since since you do have these these upcoming shows going on, like mm-hmm. like I mean, when you when you did your sofa videos, like you you it was it was clear by how you did your video that you cared about production value. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, what is it maybe that you do? in your shows like do you do you bring anything extra when you're doing a live performance or anything like that like like uh what 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 could we like maybe like expect to see if we were to show up at any one of these upcoming shows or my or my <laughs> i mean honestly i i think the, the truth is, is that live streaming allows us to do certain things that we couldn't do at an in-person show, and that—that's that's one thing true. that Michelle has really enjoyed. I mean, you know, you've seen her work as a video, a, yeah, as yeah. a video director. Mm, Michelle yes, is, yes. out of the three of us, Michelle is the biggest film buff. She's and she's really got the big visual imagination. You know, she she designed our logo, she designs our album covers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, all those, the way all those candles are placed behind her, and all the you know the the fake trees and everything, she came up with all of that, and. So being able to do the live streams from our chapel, we can really control the environment of how things, how things look. Now, when we're the second out of four bands at a club in Portland, you know, we got to get it on and off the stage quickly. So, but but at the same time, we're going to, be kicking it up a notch simply because we're going to be there with a live audience. Mm -hmm. Aside from one show last year, we haven't gotten to do that in so long. And I am so looking forward to it. Do you usually have kind of like an idea? Like, do you have like a, we're going to do, because I I've been in a few different bands like some of them mm-hmm. it's it's very organized down to the T where they're like we're gonna do it in this order we're gonna do this 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 or is it kind of do you play it by ear as you go and you're like all right cool that was good let's do this one next like how do you guys yeah, we, usually do it when we, you're doing a live show we generally have to 
have the set pretty worked out. Unfortunately, we're kind of behind the ball right now. We we'd really meant to be a lot more organized for this upcoming tour, but the fact is, Dave, I'm sure you're aware of this because you're friends with us on Facebook. Our, you know, Michelle and I lost our cat not so long ago, and we've we've just we've had a lot of a lot of curveballs thrown at us lately. Um, Thursday night, we're having only our third full rehearsal before our first show. <laughs> Although, I mean, you know, Jason knows the songs and Michelle and I can practice together, you know, when, when we have the time. So I, I'm totally confident we're going to have our shit together. But at the same time, you know, it is it's we're kind of throwing things together at the last minute to a degree. But don't get me yeah, wrong. I we're mean, I guess, I guess visually, though, mm-hmm. yeah. I've, um, I've created uh, oh, yes. the, yeah. stage, the stage wear, I guess, mm-hmm. of what, what we're all wearing. Because I'm also a designer and a, um, a seamstress, so I've be created clothing for all, all of us here. So it's kind of, it's kind of a bit of a uniform for this tour. That's cool. Um, but that's not all we can do visually. We can't carry great big lights. We can't bring stage props or anything Yeah, no, like no Stonehenge. No Stonehenge. <laughs> what about as far as like uh, merch sort of stuff? Like, what do you guys do? You guys usually sell CDs. Do you guys do like shirts oh, yeah. and stuff. Like, what? What? What's like some of the cool uh, Ashes Fallen merch? Yeah, we've got T-shirts, we've got stickers, we've got badges, we've got buttons, we've got coffee mugs, we've got. CDs, of course, but yes, oh. the coffee mugs. Yeah, that that's that's coffee something that's a little off the beaten. Did you get a coffee beaten. mug? Did they get coffee mug? It's like, like hey, I'm acknowledging mug? that our fans are adults, but they still know how to rock. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs an extra long coffee mug. Fuck yeah, they do. <laughs> and if you don't have one, I'll send you one. Well, I'll definitely be at that caravan show in San Jose. Excellent, right. excellent. And I do want to give a shout out to the media wench if she if she's online. She did. I we did throw some ideas back and forth about that that April 29th show. So I definitely appreciate the the boots on the the local boots on the ground helping me get this thing going. Oh, 100 percent, man. And then if you know anybody in like if you know anybody in the scene too, that's just looking to expand their audience even by the littlest bit. And that goes for you listening as well. If you guys know anybody that makes music, doesn't matter what kind, introduce them to the show. If you're listening to this podcast, text oh, this podcast to somebody. Text the podcast to somebody, but <clears throat> they should be local. Yeah. Don't don't put that call out because we'll be, I already get enough music from people that send me from all over the world. And that's annoying because <laughs> I fucking, I'm sure their music is great, but. Spread the joy. Yeah, I, I figure we're kind of grandfathered in because Jason and I are from the South Bay, even though that's not where we're based anymore. <laughs> it's all good. You got roots. All right, we mean, do. We do. All right, <clears throat> Chip, you want to read the fucking podcast out? So all right. On to the other side here. So if you're listening live, good for you. Keep tuning in every Tuesday at 9 p.m. till whenever the fuck we stop. Um, but <laughs> if you're listening to the podcast, also thank you. Thank you to Ashes Fallen for joining us tonight and on our two hundred on our two hundredth show no less. Uh you can find this show on any podcatcher that you that you so choose to use. Uh or if you just want to go directly to echoplexmedia.com, then you can do it that way. Also, if you're tired of using Spotify, if you're tired of just, you know, the usual radio shit that you listen to. Then go to echoplexmedia.com slash radio, or even easier, eplex.xyz. You can go to our radio page. You can request songs. You can go through our entire library, and then you can go and search these artists yourself. Um, Dave, what was it that you were just telling me earlier? There was an artist that says, like, at least once a month they get, what do they get? There are a couple artists, yeah, they once a month somebody will buy their shit on Bandcamp because they heard it on here, but that's more probably the Sunday or Wednesday or Thursday show. Doesn't matter. It's all from <laughs> echoplexmedia.com. Go fuck yourself. Um, anyways, thank you so much for making this labor of love a thing. Even though most of our uh, live listeners aren't always local, uh, it's cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. This has been a great project for me to be a part of. We have a library of over 1,500 songs and growing. Um, and it's given us the opportunity to network with so many really, really good artists. So keep listening, keep sharing the stream, and uh, James Perry, everybody from Ashes Fallen, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. And uh, thank you. Thank like you I said, we're just ending the podcast. Uh, I don't know if y'all have things to do in the morning and you want to split, or if you want to stay. We do not 
judge either way. This is one more Ashes Fallen song. This is All Shall Fall. I've had to pee the whole time Chip was talking. Thanks for listening to Local Love. <laughs>